Shalom. First off, I want to start off by saying all praises, honor, and glory is due unto Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. By Hashem Rakakadashis, all praises to the world cause God, whose true name in the Hebrew is Yahweh. By Hashem, meaning in the name Yahweh Shai, meaning the name of the only begotten Son. I also want to say the honors to the elders and apostles of great millstone and peace and mercy to the whole elect preachers, word and truth and sincerity. I don't brother Taz about the great millstone, Arizona camp, but with what another video to edify. We're going to get right into this. Um, play this video. Got another one. I got an article I want to get into, and Lord will this be edifying. The U.S. military is struggling to recruit the nation's next generation of service members, those from Gen Z. So because Gen Z don't want to join the Army, you want to go back to drafting. Let me tell you, it's not going to work. It is not going to work. You could put a gun to their head. You could threaten their life with prison time. It ain't going to work. They're not coming. They're not coming. Let's go back a bit. World War I, World War II, it was patriotism. That's the reason why they went. That, and they didn't have the level of information that we have now. Fast forward a bit. 9-11, it's the same thing. Patriotism. They joined the army to fight for their country. Now to the age of internet, with all the information that we have now, you think these kids are going to put their life on the line to fight for a country that don't care about them? You got another thing coming. They're literally going to put their life on the line and you couldn't even give them the little student loan they asked you for. Please. I mean, even when we went to Iraq, we went there, we were there for so many years and we have nothing to show for it. Because clearly we didn't go there for oil or anything because the gas prices just did not go down. If anything, the gas prices went up. And then you want us to fight for another country that is not even fighting for themselves. Ukraine, the soldiers are surrendering. I'm, I'm sure you've seen those videos. Same thing in it. You see, no. Now, this is what I find weird. We cannot find any money to solve any problems we have in our own country. Drinking water, homelessness, hunger. We can't solve these problems, but we find $100 billion to fund war. We have a budget for war. Oh. The U.S. military. You see? And Jake, Jake made some valid points, but at the end of the day, these, these, uh, this new generation that don't want to go to war, well, that's scriptural. That's very much scriptural. This is, um, Jeremiah 51 and 30. It says, the mighty men of Babylon have forborn to fight. They have remained in their, in their holds. You see, uh, their might had failed. They became as women, and this is the weakest generation ever, right? They're talking about how every year they got to cut down on the requirements for the military. Now that they're, they're accepting people that don't have a college degree, right? They have burned uh, her dwelling places. Her bars are broken. One pot post shall run to meet another, one messenger to meet another, to show the king of Babylon that his city is taken at one end, right? This place is ripe to be pillaged and plundered because what? Nobody here is ready to fight. It's the weakest generation, man. A bunch of soft, effeminized people. It says, and the passages are stopped in the reeds they have burned with fire and the men of war are affrighted. For thus say Yahweh of hosts, the power of Israel, the daughter of, of Babylon, is like a threshing floor. It is time to thresh her, yet a little while, and the time for her harvest shall come. And that's what we come to. This is a show of it. The fact that they can't get anybody in here for their military. Right? There's another scripture that says, uh, um, This is, um, give me one second. This is, yeah, this is it, I think. Uh, Ezekiel 30 and 22, it says, Therefore, thus say Yahweh, power, behold, I am against Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and I will break his arm. Uh, the strong and that which was broken, and I will cause the sword to fall out of his hand. And this is what's happening. The Lord is breaking that strength that America had. This is that new Pharaoh, man. Right? 
But what you got to understand is with these dwindling numbers, because they've been addressing this. Remember, there's a scripture I'm going to get. It's going to bring a little more light into what I'm about to go into. But this ain't going to be no normal war. So these dwindling numbers, it's really not a problem. It's really not a problem. It says U.S. military cuts 24,000 jobs in major force restructuring. It says the U.S. Army has announced a significant force structure overhaul that involves cutting around 24,000 jobs or nearly 5% of its forces of its force. The Army Army Force a Structure Transformation aims to slash already empty posts to recreate create space for modern formations necessary for winning uh, future wars. What are modern formations? Right? What is a modern what is the modernization of war? Let's let's look that up. Right? Just these parts I want to break down, right? It says what is military modernization? What is army modernization? It is a progressive transformation transformation of critical elements by which the army defines, uh, constructs, and operates itself. Doctrine, organization, training, material, leadership, and educational personnel, education personnel, facilities, and policy. From this present tradition context to the future. Now, what does that really mean, right? It says, what is the future warfare? What are future warfare technologies? Fifth generation uh, warfare aims to control the adversary's population by distorting their uh, worldview and threatening uh, and threat percent perceptions, even without knowledge of the target. These shifting battlefields have transformed with critical technologies like cyber, virtual augmented reality ai and 3d printing the last one i want to go to it says what would the future what would a future war look like and that's what they're talking about future warfare it says the future of warfare will be shaped by new technology such as the role of ever smaller drones and robots on the battlefield offensive cyber war capabilities extraordinary surveillance capabilities both on the battlefield and particularly particular individuals, greater reliance on special operation forces operating, right? This is what new warfare looks like. So right here where it says, um, here it is. It says the Army Force Structure Transformation aims to slash already empty posts to create space for modern formations necessary for winning future wars. AI, all this technology is going to be used for the future war. And what, what scripture does that come to mind, right? This is, um, Isaiah 95. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. That was the old warfare. Hand to hand, man to man, mano y mano. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. That is a whole new warfare. Right? More than 10,000 job tides, 10,000 jobs tied to the U.S. counterinsurgency mission in Iraq and Afghanistan that are no longer needed are expected to be removed. Another 10,000 positions from Scott uh, Stryker and infantry brigade, combat teams, cavalry, squadrons, and uh, security force assistance uh, brigades to train foreign forces will also be phased out, right? Because the reason why a foreign trading, a uh, foreign training is being phased out is because there's no more allies to America, right? They need to shore up their own forces. It says the remaining three thousand jobs to be cut will. Uh, come from special operations and other units that do not deploy often. The army will shrink excess, largely un unmanned, uh, hollow force structure and build new formations equipped with new capabilities needed for large scale combat operations. The announcement stated. So this is going to be like an entire switch to how war is fought. They are moving the pieces to get into this new form of warfare. Now, this is where this video comes in. Targets for their airstrikes in the Middle East. 
They're relying on an AI-enabled platform known as Maven Smart System. It uses machine learning algorithms that can teach themselves to find things like rocket launchers, missile silos, and vessels with the help of computer vision and other data streams. It's the culmination of a Pentagon effort to bring AI to combat that started in 2017 with the launch of Project Maven. It was controversial even in the early days. In 2018, thousands of Google workers protested being involved in what they called warfare technology. I met Vice Admiral Trey Whitworth, a Navy intelligence officer who has spent three decades in targeting. He heads the agency that's now in charge of improving MAVEN, the National Geospatial Intelligence Agency. They're developing the system amid growing worries over the many mistakes AI systems can make, such as being poisoned, losing accuracy over time, or relying on bulk data. You're going to have to make sure that the training data has a person that ensures that it's good training data, and that we're not getting bad training data to learn to have at least the machine make the wrong record. So I like the direction that we're heading. If it's principled, we're good. He insists that with the right safeguards... Yeah. Lord said what? Let's get this. This is uh, Ezekiel 21 and 9. It says, Son of man, prophesy and say, Thus say Yahweh, a sword, a sword is sharpened and also furbished. It is sharpened to make a sore slaughter. It is furbished that it may glitter. Should we then make mirth? It contemneth the rod of my son is every tree. That sword that's being sharpened is everything that's pulling into this whole new world's war. AI, shrinking of, of, of military forces. And I've said this before in other videos. This next war don't need that many bodies. Right? Uh, and the bodies that will be used, it's not really going to be hand-to-hand -hand combat like that. The bodies that will be used, is, it's, it's going to be greatly used for logistics, moving around military equipment. Right? And he has given it to be furbished, that it may be handled. The sword is sharpened, and it is furbished to give it into the hand of the slayer. And that's where we at. Right? They're going to be bombing with precision because this is the day of the Lord. This is what the Lord had planned. All right? So, Lord willing, this is edified. I'm going to say, Call Hola, Yahweh, by Shimmy Abishai, by Shimmy Kakadash. Shalom.